The problem they've got on health care and cap and trade is that their talking points simply do not uh, jive with what the American people know to be true. I mean, think about it. When the president stands up and says, we're going to take over health care and we're going to save money, do you think anyone believes that? Of course not. And so that's why I think you see them now lashing out and changing strategic uh, direction. They know they can't beat us on these two issues now. They know that. They've seen the poll numbers. They've had a six-month, seven-month run-up, and they can't beat us. The, the best hope they have at this point is to demonize us at this point. And you've seen a wholesale shift in their strategic direction from talking about what the issue means, how they're going to fix it, what they're going to do, to instead saying these people are, what, the Speaker of the House said un-American in the USA Today, uh, which is a stunning, imagine during the anti-war protest, okay, if, if, if President Bush or any conservative, any free market or any conservative has stood up and said, those protests are un-American, imagine the firestorm that would be erupting. Imagine if the White House of Bush or any White House, Republican White House, in the last 20 years, or the Reagan White House, for us older folks, I know you guys are younger, but us older folks, had stood up and said, we need a new website so you can report fishy emails. Imagine the uproar that would be. But that's what These we're seeing. These folks cannot put together a bake sale on Saturday at this point, because their folks are down and out, and they know they're losing on the issue. They're literally having to beg people with money to come work for them. You know what? We're not having a shortage of activists right now. We're not begging people. We're not having to go out and 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 ask people from to heck, ask them to come and exchange. We're going to give them money. Point out the hypocrisy of it. Go if you haven't done that. It's worth looking at looking with your blogs. These ads are everywhere now because there is no energy on their side right now, except what's being manufactured through payment. So point out the hypocrisy that these are real life volunteers across the country pouring out against this health care travesty and against cap and trade. You mentioned that you've been very successful in terms of organizing and protests, but how, what has your success been in terms of developing health care reform? Right now we're focusing on stopping this terrible legislation, but it, but it is our job as a movement to start explaining what we are for. And so two of the guys in Congress that I've been most impressed with their plans are Senator Jim DeMint from South Carolina and Senator Paul Ryan from Wisconsin, a House member, Congressman Paul Ryan from Wisconsin. They have great ideas, everything from expanding use of HSAs uh, to allowing folks to get insurance across state lines, which will lower cost and give them more flexibility in, in choosing what's best for their family or small businesses. So I do think it's incumbent on us as a movement to start laying out some of what we're for as well. Although the threat level is so high for stopping this terrible legislation, that is our natural uh, bent right now to talk about what's wrong with this legislation. But we do have a responsibility to say, yeah, here are some of the reforms we're for. How do you plan to gear up your followers to face the confrontation that you foresee coming? Well, we don't have followers. All of our folks are free market folks, so they're, they're very freedom oriented, but they're good allies and supporters and activists with us. Uh, but we have a good network. And you know, through email, through phone calls, uh, they, they know what's at stake. And so we're taking the rest of August and we're doing our own rallies and events around the country. Uh, I'll be in Pennsylvania later, later this week at some of our rallies. We're also encouraging them to turn out these town hall meetings and make their voices heard. Um, and then post Labor Day, uh, we'll come back and say, okay, we had a good five week uh, congressional break. We delivered our message. We're winning on the issues, it's clear. Now comes the final stretch run. You've got the rest of September and October. That'll be the decisive moment in this. Uh, and now it's time to make one big push. And I think they'll be ready to do it. The energy level is so high there right now with, with our, our activists. They know what's at stake with their freedoms.